Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for Hallbreaker's Isle. This is one of three new dungeons made available by Patch 2.3 and Final Fantasy XIV Defenders of Eorzea. This zone definitely gives off a pirate feel, so get ready to swash some buckles and hunt some dead pirates booty. My name is Guybrush and I'll be your dungeon guide. We begin by pulling trash mobs with mechanics that we've all seen before. As you clear up the hill, be sure to watch out for any patrolling Harpia and these deadly deadly bees. These bees cast Final Sting, our favorite mechanic ever, so it may be best to focus them down first. Another thing to note are these bear traps scattered around the area. Stepping into them will stun you and cause you to bleed over time. Eventually, we come up to the first boss, Sasquatch. Sasquatch is a massive, angry gorilla. You may notice a number of banana trees around the outer edge of Sasquatch's domain. Once the fight is engaged, these banana trees will become interactable, dropping one bunch of bananas anytime you click on them. The main mechanic of this fight is simple. Throughout the fight, Sasquatch will enrage and the only way he'll calm down is with a tasty banana treat. That said, anytime you see him go bananas, have one player click on a tree. As soon as a banana is dropped, Sasquatch will run over to eat it and eventually calm down. The catch is, for every banana he eats, Sasquatch will gain a stacking damage buff. This acts as a soft enrage for the encounter. Your goal is to kill him before he gets too strong. Throughout the fight, a number of tiny adds will spawn. These adds should be destroyed immediately. If they are up when you drop bananas from a tree, they'll also make a beeline for the treats and might even manage to steal them from Sasquatch. Should this happen, you need to be ready to click on another tree. However, the adds have very little health, so this should never be a problem. The last thing to watch out for is Stool Pelt. Sasquatch will target a random party member with a large AoE poop circle. All players should do their best to avoid this. Aside from that, this is a fairly easy tank and spank. Up next, we enter the most detailed caves I've ever seen in my life. Seriously, this place is amazing! The trash here is again very familiar. You will notice an abundance of suspicious looking treasure coffers. Most of these are mimics, but it's important to pull them all. The mimics will drop a stone tablet that will be used to progress to the next area, so don't forget to loot. These Ninky Nanka pulls will cast Hatch that will spawn smaller adds. This is very similar to the pudding in Pharaoh's Sirius. Either kill it before it casts or interrupt it. Should the cast go off, tanks be ready to pick up the new spawns. Up next, we face the Sea Worm. This worm has two AoE attacks you'll notice throughout the fight. The first is a massive frontal column attack, and the second is a large AoE circle on each party member. These are pretty easy to avoid, and everyone should take care not to take excess damage. Periodically, he will spawn bubbles around the room. If you step into them, these bubbles will suck you up and trap you within them for a certain amount of time. Once they pop, they do a decent amount of AoE damage that should be easy to heal through. These bubbles will be used to avoid damage from certain mechanics, but until you need to use them, they are easily ignored. Throughout the fight, the worm will burrow into the ground and do one of two attacks. We've noticed that if only two bubbles spawn, the worm's underground attack is a simple line attack in the direction of a random player. As soon as you see which direction he's stampeding in, get out of his direct path. However, if he has spawned four bubbles and he burrows, we know he's going to hit us with the big AoE. As soon as you see this massive whirlpool, all members should run into the bubble to avoid the excess damage. If you miss your bubble, or you enter it too soon, you'll be caught on the ground during whirlpool, while you'll be yanked into the middle and dealt a ton of damage. If you're not at full health going into this, you may die since you'll probably take three bubble explosions to the face too. Once the worm resurfaces and the bubbles pop, the fight repeats until he's dead. Bubbles will stay up for the duration of the fight, and you may find yourself running out of room very quickly. The radius of the bubbles are quite large and you may get accidentally sucked in if you're too close. If this is a problem, you may want to assign someone to pop any extra bubbles you don't need. However, the fight is over fairly quickly, so they shouldn't bother you too much. Up next, we continue through the cave and take a leap of faith off of a cliff. How we don't break our legs is beyond me. This area has a few mini gates where you need to clear the surprise sprites before you continue. While you can go either way at this junction, the quest on the right has a chance to drop one of the Naughty Nanka minions. Need that. Finally, we reach the last boss, Kraken. This is the coolest looking boss and I really hope he makes a comeback because tickling his tentacles just doesn't seem to do him justice. You'll notice four platforms with tentacles guarding each one. The goal here is to jump from platform to platform, killing tentacles as you go. 
Sounds simple enough, but a boss this big isn't going down that easily. We begin by killing the first tentacle. As soon as we do, you'll notice waterways spawn on each platform, one for each direction required to get to another platform. You will use these water spouts to jump from platform to platform. It's very important to stay together as a group and move between platforms only when necessary. Each time you jump onto a platform, you gain a stacking debuff that lowers your HP and increases how much damage you take for 15 seconds. Obviously, you want to keep the stack as low as possible, so limiting your jumps is important. For each platform, two normal tentacles will spawn. Once you've killed the two tentacles, you can jump to the next platform and repeat. One thing to keep an eye out for is the ground-targeted AoE that will drop ink on anyone standing in it. The ink debuff will slow you down and put a bleed on you, so every player should try to avoid this as much as possible. Kraken will also mark up a random player with this symbol. This is similar to the T9 golem effect, but instead of dropping a golem, you'll be pooping out a small tornado. This tornado will do a massive AoE blast after about 8-10 to 10 seconds of its spawn, damaging anyone on its platform. To deal with this, any player affected by this green symbol should jump to any other platform and drop the tornado there before jumping back. This should completely negate the damage of the tornado blast. Another thing to note are the attacks from each tentacle. All tentacles will do a mid-range attack called Wallop that will hit anyone in the middle of the platform. Be sure to stand either at max range or in melee. However, I would suggest that the whole group stacks in the melee to counter the second tentacle attack clear out. This will knock back players on the platform, and if you're standing at range, you'll probably get knocked into a water spout and flung to another platform. Since we're trying to minimize unnecessary platform hopping, stacking in the melee is the easiest way to avoid all this. Once we've killed four tentacles, a special tentacle will spawn. This tentacle will harass us for the rest of the fight by stunning a random player and flinging them onto another platform. This special tentacle seems to follow a basic threat table and will appear at whatever platform the tank is on. For now, ignore this tentacle and if it throws you away, get back to the group as fast as possible, especially if you land on a platform with a tornado brewing on it. Continue to destroy the normal tentacles until you've killed all eight. Now you can focus your energies on defeating this mystery appendage. At this point, two players can be marked up for tornado drops, so handle those accordingly. Continue on until the last tentacle is defeated. And there you have it! Scoop up the pirate's loot and continue on to the next one. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Up next, we'll look at Stone Vigil Hard. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time!